Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are finishing up the backing of the Kite in a Square Block quilt and the backing is a pieced backing and I have got it finished. I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to show you a bit of the issues that I've got going on that I think think I have found a fix for, um, which means just a little bit more sewing before I can get it onto the machine. So let me show you. Okay, so I'm standing up high to show you the quilt backing, um, which is going to be almost in the end like a double-sided quilt, I feel like. That's, that was kind of my goal, was to make it more than just a quilt. So I wanted to show you this. I had gotten some comments that people wanted to see all of it. So... Um, or they couldn't see all of the quilts in it. So I'm doing my best I can. This quilt's huge. I am having trouble. You can see over on this side, it's definitely like not completely flat over here. Um, and then this side, we're running into the quilting frame. And that's like as far back as it can go. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the problems. Okay, so because this was a pieced quilt here, the problems, and I was just basically l rolling the fabric out, laying it out, cutting it, and sewing it on, and then just trying to keep this line and this other line in line with this. So you can see that the quilt underneath, so you can see where you have a ghost kite line here that then goes into that kite and then out this way. And my goal is that when I am quilting the top, we're going to have those same kind of quilting lines following through here and then moving into the actual quilt at once and then out. So all of this white is going to show off all of the quilting that is done, right? So that's the exciting part. Maybe that makes a little bit more sense now that you can actually see the quilt block done. So I'm going to show you the biggest issue um, because when you are putting a quilt on a long arm frame, specifically the backing of the quilt, you wanna have about five inches around the entire quilt to give you room to pin the quilt, position the quilt. Some of it is to take up for like that little bit of potential wiggle, which I am aiming not to have any horizontal wiggle because everything's supposed to line up as I'm quilting it. So that's gonna be a big goal for me. So the sides are not as important, but the other thing the sides do is you put your quilt clips on either end, like a little, like a little Pac-Man bite, you know, where he grabs onto each end and is pulling them to keep your quilt tight, to keep the backing tight, to decrease your risk of wrinkles and all of those things. So you do need that room, that little five inches of fabric to grab onto the quilt back and hold it. So the problem that I have is I don't have that five inches and I don't have a consistent border. So I'm going to have to fix that. Let me, let me show you. All right. So here is the left edge. And as you can see, I have lots of fabric here and you can see the back line of the border of the top one. And then as we go, okay, it got a little bit shorter, and then it got real short. So this part right here is, you know, what, three quarters, half an inch short. So I'm going to have to fix that. And then as we go along the edge here, again, lots of fabric. Not bad that it covers to the edge. And then lots of fabric. The bottom is a little bit more consistent, so I'll scooch down, in that we have the line of the of the actual front of the quilt, so still not five inches there. Now, this is the bottom of it, so it's not as big a deal, 
um, but you still want to have a little bit of wiggle room. And then I have lots here. The other reason that it's important for all of this to be straight is that everything needs to line up. So I want to have a nice straight edge across here so that I am pinning it onto the quilt nicely. So the other reason that it's really important that this quilt edge is nice and straight is because I'm going to pin it. You have to attach it to this leader cloth, right? So you have to attach it to this leader cloth. And if it is not a level across, right, then you're guessing and you could end up with, you know, this or maybe, you know, not as Maybe not as dramatic as that, I would hope, but you know, you, if your quilt is pinned like this, then it's just going to be really hard to roll up something at an angle straight, right? So we want to have a really nice straight top line so that when we attach everything, it looks like it's supposed to. So my fix is going to be to go around the entire quilt and cut with scissors. I, I know, scary, right? with scissors across the top line and then I'm going to add a five inch border all the way around the whole quilt um, and that will be probably cut off at the end of it all but it's going to give me that little bit of wiggle room to make me feel more comfortable whenever I'm doing this long arm quilting and whatever I cut off it's just a white strip of fabric I can use it for my paper piecing projects and for my background projects for using up my scraps this year because my big goal for this year is to not buy any more fabric, quilt, kits, any of those things until I have used up all that I have because I have a fair number of quilt kits actually like waiting to go, waiting for me to make them. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room to buy backings for when I finish quilt projects and for if there's like a special, you know, like if somebody has a baby and I don't have a quilt kit that's going to work for a baby or for their design or that person, then I might buy something for them to make for them. But otherwise, I'm only going to make what I have on my shelf right now, which is a little bit sad that I have that much that I can do. But... I can do this. The other goal that I have this year is to use more of my scraps. And there are a couple of paper piecing projects that I'm looking at. I just haven't started them. One is one that I am designing on my own. I know how exciting. On EQ8 Quilter, Electric Quilt 8. That's what it is. Um, they just all shorten it to EQ8. Um, so I'm designing a French Bulldog on my EQ8 because I have a friend who loves Frenchies and has bred Frenchies. Um, I do not have a Frenchie, but she loves them. And I wanted to make something really cute for like a pot holder. And I saw this design using an eight and a half inch block. And yeah, I wanted to do that. Okay. So I'm going way into a whole other direction. <laughs> Apologize for that. Just some heads up here. Um, maybe I'll do a video of things I want to do this year. I don't know. If you're interested, let me know. I can put that down below. Um, otherwise, just know that there are some things coming up, and my goal is not to buy anything new, and we can do that. I can do that. You don't have to do that. If you want to buy something new, go for it. But if you have stuff on your shelf to do, I challenge you to do it as well, along with me. All right, now I'm going to challenge myself to fix this quilt backing. It's so weird. I want to say quilt top. To fix this quilt backing so we can get it on the long arm quilt and start quilting it. So what I did after I cut this initial line was I got my cutting board out and since I am cutting with the quilt top underneath it, I didn't want to cut it so I'm cutting a quarter of an inch away 
from my quilt top. So there's no fear of actually cutting on the actual quilt top that I'm doing. And I'm just going down the quilt this way. And so I've already done this side, which looks, it's not even right now because I had to flip it over because it's so wide. Um, and so I'll go down the quilt this way and then I've got to do the edge along there, which is going to be the harder part. Um, maybe I can rotate the whole quilt around and do it long way like this because I don't have as much horizontal room with this quilt and I like it to be flat out like this. I feel like the less that I'm moving it when I'm cutting it, the better my line will be. Okay, so I have totally got the border on all the way around. Did really good with the amount of fabric. I was like basically spot on. This is what I was left with. Way to go me, yay. That's a win for, I didn't do any quilt mouth. I just estimated. it. It seemed about right, so that worked out well. Um, now, that top portion that I cut with by hand with the pinking shears, um, you can see there's the pinking shears. That portion that I cut was where was the worst part of the quilt where I was actually short a little bit. So using what I've learned from the pas de deux quilt, I did a partial seam and I sewed all the, I sewed that five inch border down this line, left that and then sewed it up this way. So now I have this bit of fabric over. I want this to be straight so I think I'm actually going to go through and fold this over and cut this straight using the mat and the scissors or not the mat and the scissors using the mat and the rotary cutter and my um, ruler because I really need this to be straight. Since everything has to line up, it really does need to be straight. That means that it's going to be a little bit shorter, but that part I'm not worried about because ultimately this part is likely going to be cut off anyways. This is where the quilt line will actually be. Now this will probably be on there and there's a little bit of stitching that needs to be pulled out from where... I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, I could just sew down here and then I'll just move over and sew further and then I was like that's that's just gonna leave this huge wrinkle so I don't know I was not thinking quite right there so I picked all of that out but issues of doing a big quilt with a tiny cutting mat okay so what I'm gonna do this is the edge that is short and then we go to this edge here so you can see this there's our little line where we're short. I am going to line this ruler up where we want it to sit. And then I'm going to measure, here we go, come closer. So I'm going to line it up to the edge of this one. Then I'm going to measure from the center line of this seam out. And that is going to tell me how much, right? So I'll measure to this seam, which is gonna roughly be, what, four inches? So it was about an inch short. Um, so we're gonna measure that and then cut based on that seam all the way down so that it's four inches wide. And that should fix it. Okay, everybody, so I have got, as you can see, the back of the quilt onto the long arm. I didn't film that part, but I do have a tutorial on how I load my long arm 
um, quilting frame with my quilts. I do not float my quilts. Everything is pinned to the leader cloth, and then I do use the quilt bar to wind up my quilt, and I like to do that so that nothing wiggles, and in this instance, I think that's going to be even more important than normal. I took really, really great care with rolling this up to try and keep everything as straight as possible, especially once I got to that horizontal bar of those kite blocks because I didn't want them to be, you know, if they're already at an angle like this, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for me whenever I'm quilting it. But I think we've got everything on there, so we're ready to lay the quilt top on top of it and... Then I can't believe it. We're going to be ready to start quilting. I am so excited. This is like one of the, this is the first big quilt of 2024. So I am so excited to start doing it. I'm also so excited to be doing some free motion quilting in this. Um, I will give a bit of a spoiler in that some of the design is a bit of a repeat. Um, but what I think that's going to do is allow me to just have a lot of fun quilting it because kind of like in the red and white sampler quilt with that background being all the same. And if you haven't seen that quilt, you can go check it out. It's on, it's in my videos, but the background was all the same. And so it was a lot of fun quilting it because it was just so easy to sit down and go. And so that's what my hope is with this, that while some of this design is going to be repeating, it's going to make it easy to just flow through this quilt and have a lot of fun quilting it, which I think that's so important. We should all be having fun quilting. This shouldn't be just like, you know, memorization or, you know, studying or anything that is more of a chore. Like, it should be something that's super fun. And so I am very excited. So without further ado, I'm going to get this quilt top on so that we can start quilting. <laughs> Okay, so what I've been showing you is I'm taking a lot of care. This is the quilt top, and then this is the backing, the pieced backing. So I've got my star or kite um, block that's here, and this is the seam for those before it goes into that white fabric where once we quilt all of this, it's gonna show along here, right? But the main thing is I want to keep this lined up. So I'm trying to use these seams as a guide to keep them lined up so that everything is nice and hopefully these will line up. Now, I might be able to do a little bit of fudging once I get this all the way on there, then I can position the top so that everything is going horizontally properly. But the other thing that I like as I'm rolling it up is you can see that along the top line here, all of these are basically right around the same spot in the quilt. Um, and that's good because if we were seeing, you know, like this one, you see this line, but down here, that line is here and, you know, it's going again at an angle then that's gonna, that would be a huge problem. So that part is good in that my original pinning and quilt line at the bottom of this quilt top was good. And as I'm rolling it, I'm keeping it straight and level. Um, and that's gonna be very helpful as we get to the top because once I line this up, hopefully if everything's straight, then it should look right. And the other thing, that I didn't think about is that if this is going at an angle, that's also going to show on the back of this quilt. So I hope I haven't made myself like this huge quilt and a massive disaster design 
So I'm getting a little bit nervous about what it's going to look like in the end, but that's okay. We can, we can do this. We got this. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys what I've done because I always find this one of the most frustrating parts of putting the quilt on to the quilting frame is that you get everything kind of fluffed and set and good and then you basically have to take it off or somehow manage to put your batting between these. And I've never really found a great way to do it because I feel like, especially in this instance, if I just went ahead and put the batting on, then it's gonna make it really hard for me to line everything up and feel good about it being straight and good. Um, also, if you're using this, so if you're floating your quilt, then it's not really a big deal. You just pull your batting up and set your quilt down and you're done. But if you're using your quilt top bar, then rolling that up and keeping it straight and flat and everything nice with batting underneath of it, that's that's just too difficult. I tried it. I was like, oh, I need to put the batting up and then I'll roll it up and that just didn't work well. So what I have found is that I go ahead, put my quilt top on, roll it up, and then I take the entire bar off, pull the quilt batting up, put it down and put my quilt top bar back. Now, when you're just doing like a regular quilt, that's not really that big of a deal because your your quilt top doesn't really move much and you're just making a straight line across the top, which is very easy to see with batting on top of it. In this instance, I've got to keep everything really, really straight. And also I'm lining up where this block is the same as the block underneath. And so because of that, I need to be able to line it back up. So here's what I've done. So what I've done is I've lined it up here and then I took one of my rollers and went ahead and marked the quilt backing and a little bitty piece on the quilt top itself. And then on the edges here, I've gone here and marked where this seam line should be and the same on the other side over here. Right? So hopefully with this, this is gonna give me a little bit of markers to go ahead, put that batting in between the quilt and then lay this on so that everything lines up really nicely. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna sign off here because I don't think I've actually designed the border. I was so focused on the middle of the quilt. And then when I finished the pas de deux quilt, I kind of like redirected because I had most of the idea done here. But I don't think I've actually decided on a quilt border idea. So if you guys have an idea for the border, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I know it's a bit as a, of a teaser because I was hoping to be able to actually start quilting, but that should be next week. We will get to that. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Love talking with you guys. Love hearing you. Don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up, a share, all of that good youtube -y stuff. And um, I'll see you next time on The Little Quilter. Have a great day.